Hello, this is Lisa Royal Holt here, and I'm continuing the series with the Galactic Heritage cards. I've gotten a lot of requests for more deeper meanings for each of the cards. Uh, so once again, in case you're seeing this video and you haven't seen any of the other videos, we are working with the Galactic Heritage cards that I channeled from the Consciousness Germain. Just to be clear, Germain is not Saint Germain. The, his name is spelled G-E-R-M-A-N-E, -E, and he chose that name to reflect to people that he comes from the same source, because the English meaning for it means coming from the same source. Okay, so Germain has said to me that he wishes to actually take a very long journey with you through each of the 108 cards. Now, obviously, this is not going to take place in one video, so over time, we're going to release videos in order uh, of the cards, number 1 through 108. And in this way, you'll have time to integrate the information and apply it when you use the cards. So I'm going to let Jermaine tell you more about the energy of the cards, and in just a moment, he will be here. So thank you for your interest in the Galactic Heritage cards, and let's see what Jermaine will have to say. Thank you. Well, greetings to everyone. This is the Consciousness Germain. It is a pleasure to be sharing this information with you at this time. Some of you have heard that we have said in the past that all we have ever taught you in the past 30 years, all that we will ever teach you is embedded within this card system. Because we were looking for a way to share not just intellectual information about your galactic heritage, but the much, much deeper archetypal information that is essential for transformation. This information is far more complex and multi-layered than what can be expressed through language. And so that is one of the reasons why we created this card system, so that you can tangibly and actively work with the energies of these different archetypal uh, consciousnesses within your galactic family and allow their energy to assist you in your own transformation. So through this series of videos that we're going to present to you, we're basically going to take you on a little journey. And this is a journey through galactic history. However, of course, we are talking about millions and millions and millions of years of history. So obviously, all of the details cannot be covered. Instead, we're going to go through mo most of the important and significant archetypal energies that are affecting humanity on Earth at this time now. Also, Keep in mind that the information in the cards and the information that we will share is very multi-layered, much like the layers of an onion. So you're going to see, as we start to talk about the cards, that there is more of a mundane layer, but there is also deeper and deeper and deeper layers that move closer to holographic consciousness and the transformation of consciousness itself. So, in order to begin then, we are going to start, of course, with card number one. But before we do, 
we are going to give you a little bit of a, uh, let's say, a creation lesson from our point of view. So this is, this is actually a lesson that we give in many of the workshops. So for some of you out there, this will be a review, although recently we've taken it to a different level. All right, so we've drawn a circle on the board here. And this circle represents all consciousness in its unified state. Now obviously, right in this moment, we have a paradox because all consciousness is limitless and cannot be contained in a circle. However, in order to express the concepts in language, we have to use what is available to us. So, for now, please see this circle as representative of all consciousness in its unified, original state. Now, if we are to take the lesson further, we then have to move to the state in which original polarity began. All right, so imagine then if this consciousness perhaps said to itself, I wonder what it would be like not to know myself. Or perhaps this consciousness somehow wanted an experience of being able to see its own reflection. What would it thus have to create? It would ha have to create another realm in which to see itself. So, we have drawn a second circle here in the center of this circle. Much like you might say a womb within a body where a baby is born and life begins. So here you have then two different states of consciousness. You have the one all-seeing, all-aware, unified consciousness, which we will uh, label by that single eye there, the one eye. And that one consciousness is now viewing another realm within itself. So what is happening within that other realm? All right, so we're actually going to amend this drawing a little bit just so you can see on the camera what we're doing. So we've just drawn the inner circle to be a little bit bigger, all right? Now, within this state then, that is the state in which you are going to explore not knowing yourself or the experience of separation, you began to have a process of separation happening. And this is much like, we can use the, the uh, analogy of when a conception happens in the womb and you have two cells and four cells and eight cells, etc., and the continued fragmentation occurs. So at the very beginning, much like in the womb, fragmentation occurs, but the cells are still not differentiated yet. They are identical. They contain the same stuff, the same coding, if you will. And as the fragmentation continues, then, again, using your metaphors, they get smaller and smaller and smaller until finally differentiation starts to happen. So in the human embryo then, the differentiation would take the form of perhaps the nervous system, the reproductive system, the respiratory system, etc. The cells start differentiating. The same thing happens within this process of fragmentation as consciousness is exploring the idea of separation. Differentiation begins to happen as fragmentation becomes more and more common. So, what is then the most differentiated state? The most differentiated state is the human being. So this is your most differentiated state, but yet you are both at the same time. You are the one consciousness and you are experiencing existence also in an extreme state of differentiation, whereby very often you don't remember 
that your true state of being is really this one unified consciousness. Okay, so this is the beginning point then on the map that we are going to, to uh, travel with you. We're going to show you the roads on the map as represented by the journey that your galactic family has taken deep, 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 deep into separation, deep into polarity, and then eventually a healing, a reintegration, and once again an awakening into the original one state of consciousness. Now of course a map is linear and you, your human minds, exist in a linear reality. So this is why we have to present it in a linear way. However, it is not linear at all. Outside of time and space, outside of physicality, all exists simultaneously. All exists in an eternal now. We know that the mind has difficulty with that concept. So for now, it's okay to simply begin to understand the story in a linear way, but knowing that linearity is not the true state of the story. Okay, so now that you have the starting point on the map, let's say, we move to the cards. We're going to move to card number one. Card number one is, let's say, the beginning point of the journey, and it represents the very early fragmentation of the consciousness as we just described. This early fragmentation, consciousness was not yet differentiated. So you could say then that while there were different fragments from the original source, the fragments are still, in a sense, identical. Just first stages of fragmentation. You could also perhaps call that group consciousnesses. Now, you'll see on the cards that at the bottom, there is always a species listed. So here we have the species of the founders. And the founders are the way that we identify those first, first stages of separation that we were talking about in the diagram that we just drew. Also, you'll see that at the top of the card is a theme, a theme that is connected to the species. This theme is called Beyond Wisdom. Why? Simply because, going back to the diagram here, it is the state of separation that is still so, so close to the original awareness of the one that there is no what you would call information or knowledge or anything that is mind related. And even the idea of wisdom implies a little bit of knowledge. So this first card is referring to the state of the consciousness of these first beings, the founders, which is beyond wisdom because it's not based on experience. It's based on direct knowing. It's a direct knowing of this original state of consciousness. Okay, so you might be asking, big deal, yes? What if I get this card in a reading? What does this mean for me as a human being in the here and now? If you get this card in a reading, it's a really good sign that there is an aspect of you that is still very strongly connected to this original state of consciousness. And you could say to some degree that this original state of consciousness the energy of it is still a guiding force for you as you go through your life. And it's probably one of the reasons why you have an attraction to spirituality and to opening to deeper levels of yourself. Okay, so this card usually appears for people in their readings when they need to know that connection is there, when they need to reawaken themselves to that connection when they need to remember that there's more 
outside of just the human drama. There is a big consciousness that contains you, that contains the human drama, that is actually the real state of consciousness. So this is what this Founder card is meant to imply. These original beings who began the fragmentation process, and they have been to some degree like the architects of your journey into physical reality because they hold the awareness of the original state and they're like a bridge between the original state and the separated state. Without them, that memory would be very, very difficult to reconnect to. And so they, in that way then, they perform a very significant job. Now, some people ask, Germaine, what is the nature of your consciousness? And we have said this in the past a little bit vaguely, but we are connected to the founders at a lower level, meaning that we're not the first layers of separation from, or the first layers of fragmentation from the original source. We're a little bit more removed right before consciousness began to be differentiated. So this allows us to, to be able to communicate with you in a way that can be understood, although we do have to say we've been working through this channel now since 1988, and at the very beginning we were very hard to understand. So we've been working on it a little bit with all of your help, because very often the energy we transmit and the information that we transmit is a little bit out there, as you say in your language. So, my energy, Germaine, can connect with this founder energy and also help you as a bridge to reconnect with this original state of consciousness. Okay, so that's all we're going to say right now about card number one. We're now going to move to card number two. Card number two, the species or the identification on the card is galactic core. So obviously this is referring to your galaxy. Why is this card number two? Well, if we go back to the diagram and we go back to this process of fragmentation that happened, at some point fragmentation becomes so um, what is the word, so very actively engaged in that physical reality then be, begins to be populated, basically. So physical reality then is a reflection of fragmentation at a very high level. If you are going backwards toward the source, at some point you move out of physical reality and you move more into energy states. So what we're talking about then in terms of card number two is we're talking about your galaxy, which is a physical expression, it's a state of fragmentation from the original whole, that is now beginning to form physical expression. And of course we chose your galaxy because you all live in your galaxy, yes? But also more than that, galactic core has a function that is connected to the evolution of the species that are existing within that galaxy. So. This means then on Earth, where you know now you're experiencing a major transformation, that your transformation is guided, let's say, by a galactic clock. This galactic clock, so to speak, is at the core of the galaxy. And you can see here that at the, at the top, the theme that we wrote under card number two is Pulse of Life. So what does that mean? It basically is referring to this beat of the clock, so to speak, at galactic core that ties all life together in the galaxy and nudges it toward its evolutionary potential. So once again, 
you might be asking, okay, great, that's very esoteric, but what, what does this have to do with me as a human being if I receive this card in one of my readings? Well, again, much like the Founder card, this card is actually a very, very powerful card that is giving you a message that you are being asked to go deep within and connect with that cosmic pulse. That you are, at that time that you uh, are receiving the card, going through a process of evolution that's speeding up. And very often, humans have the tendency to either want to push things faster or dig their heels in and resist things. So it is asking you to feel that pulse. Move with that pulse. Allow the pulse to unfold within you and your evolution, not only as a physical being but also as a consciousness, can begin to happen in a more organic way. Now one side note, the essential energy of this card, the, of the galactic energy, is what the species on your planet that you've called Mayans were connecting to when they made their calendar and many of their teachings that have been lost at this point, some of them not, but many have been lost, were all about this galactic clock. and. Though a, a calendar can express it in some ways, each and every one of you have the ability to go within and sense that pulse yourself. It's kind of like surfing a wave, so when you begin to sense it, it's certainly recommended that you ride the wave with the same attitude that a surfer would ride the wave of his life, so to speak. So that's the recommendation. Now we understand that the first few cards of the deck are a little bit more esoteric because it's dealing with the original fragmentation and the original consciousness. You'll see that as we continue with these videos and we move into more of the denser cards as physical reality starts to be expressed, then you're going to find perhaps more relatable issues, more relatable guidance to your life here. But we're always going to continually remind you that you are this one state of being, one state of consciousness, always. And part of your awakening process is not just remembering intellectually that you are, because an intellectual remembrance is really worthless, but it has more to do with a visceral, tangible knowingness of your original state and being able to live more and more as that non-polarized original state. So these lessons are going to come out more and more as we continue our journey through the cards. So for now we do card number one and two, Next time, we will do the next cards, which are associated with the Andromedan galaxy. And you're probably wondering why, but that will come out in the next video. For now, we hope you will take time to digest this, feel the energies of these cards, see how you can incorporate and integrate the energy into your own unfoldment. Thank you so much for your interest, and we'll see you in the next video. Much love.